Hi, my name is John Talley with PartZilla.com. Today we're going to be working with the braking system on our 2007 Honda TRX 400EX. Now if you're riding along and you hear this awful grinding noise on the front of your machine, that means you probably need to take a look at your front brake pads. What you also need to do if you want to avoid that sound is look at this little indicator that Honda has provided. Once it reaches on the inside of the outside of the housing, that means it's probably time to go ahead and replace them. And as I can see, it's past the edge. So that means we need to take it apart and take a look. So let's get started. All right, the first thing we need to do is go ahead and remove these two caps that cover up the pins. Just held in by a flat blade screwdriver. So not a lot of torque required on that at all. All right, under those caps, you're going to have an Allen wrench. It's going to be a five millimeter. So we want to loosen these both up, but don't pull the pins all the way out. Thread them back, just let them sit just like that. Because they're actually still holding on to the pads themselves. At this point, make our lives a little bit easier. I want to go ahead and compress the cylinder on the caliper. All right, at this point, we can go and remove our two 12 millimeters that are holding it to the carrier. Once we get the carrier unbolted from the caliper, we can then remove our pads. All right, lift it off the disc. And as you can see, our pads are pretty well worn. So that indicator was spot on. All right, a little tricky here. You want to push in on the pads themselves because there's a spring pushing them up. You do that and your pins will pull right out. And out drop the pads. Want to be careful and not lose this shim because we need to mount that to the new brake pads which I'm about to go to the stock room and get. Something I wanted to point out on these shims as you can see in this diagram is although we have the same part number for the brake pads, there is actually a separate part number for the left and the right shims. So be careful if you have to replace one of yours. All right, well, let's get her put back together. The first thing we need to do is remove that shim from our old brake pads. Not much to it, just a small screwdriver. Be careful not to bend it up. Then we just want to replace it on our new pads, same position. Make sure those holes are lined up right there. All right, from this point, I want to go ahead and put our pins partially back into our caliper. Don't let them protrude all the way in because you actually have to put in the pads and then push the pins through the pads. This can get a little tricky. I'm make sure that, uh, that shim faces toward the actual cylinder itself. Put on the outer, like so. Then you actually have to push the pads in or down on the spring while you're pushing the, the pins through. There goes one, and there goes the other. Go ahead and start the pins back in with your five millimeter. like that. Get both of them in there. All right, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and use our flat blade screwdriver to make sure it's all the way open. And now we can slide it back over the disc. And 
and then put our 12 millimeters back in. Like so. Did y'all catch all that? Get those snug back down. Then we go in and tighten down those Allens. Doesn't have to get real carried away, just want them snug. And after that, we'll just put on the caps, give our brake a few pumps to get it to seat in. And then we can call this project done and move to the other side. It's the same procedure over there, and then take it out for a test ride. Get the caps back on. Now we're ready to move the other side. Now we've already wrapped up the other side, so the only thing that's left now is to pop on the tires and go take it for a spin. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below and we'll do our best to answer them. And if you have any other parts needs, come see us at partzilla.com.